What's good everyone, G Berg Stacks here. Today we're gonna be speaking about Cassante and everything that's changed with this champion. So in the description, you will see that there are timestamps, obviously in the video too, but always check the description with my videos. I usually, if I miss something that I should have put in the video that I thought of after, you know, I finished uh, finishing the video, I usually put it in the description and things like that, right? Uh, if anything ends up happening, I usually put it in the description, okay? But for this video, I'm going to be going over all of the changes, and then I'm going to be going over the runes, the different runes that you can end up taking this. I've been, haven't necessarily played Cassante too much, like in an actual ranked game, mostly just in Summoner Spellbook, just, just figuring some stuff out, and then watching uh, one of the best NA players, or at least one of the best Cassante players in NA, uh, which was Atreus. He's like 16, or he just turned 17, and yeah, they're like really good at, at Cassante and you know listening to their thoughts and and stuff like that and then i'm gonna be going over like build paths and some cool things that we've seen and then also talking about uh some new mechanics that ended up coming back for Cassante. is only like one and uh you know obviously uh you know we're gonna go through some combos and how the game a little bit of you know my theory crafting on how the game or how like early fights and just combos and what matters in terms of damage that Cassante like can do and, and and stuff like that okay hopefully i get through it all because i usually forget so we're gonna start with when the patch came out which was a week ago or was it this wednesday don't remember i think it was this wednesday but let's talk about it right so Cassante, uh you know let's let's see the reasoning for his his changes and you know our thoughts on it right so base attack range reduced all abilities adjusted that's this is a an entire rework right kind of right because they're keeping his I don't know what, what they would call this. This isn't a rework. It's like a balance, uh, an adjustment, I guess, because his abilities are staying the same. They're just changing on, on how they work and how much damage they do and, and a couple things like that, right? And then his base attack range got reduced. So while Cassante is intended to be a difficult champion, in the hands of skills skilled players, he offers high levels of safety, reliability, and general power regardless of his circumstances or the relative skill of his enemies, which is what made people say he was a tank, bruiser, assassin, ADC, Mage, all of that, right? Because he pretty much didn't have any flaws in his kit. The biggest flaw was that he wasn't very strong early game, but then, you know, you got some levels, you got some items, and he eventually just kind of took over games. At least for like a, a majority of the time. This has made him a pro staple since release at the cost of his playability for most players, a tale as old as time, meaning that he's better in the hands of skilled players who are able to, you know, take less of a hit from his weak early game and then scale and become the monster that Cassante is, where, you know, the, the worse of a player you are or the lower ranked of a player you are, you don't know all of these little tricks in order to, like, you know, bypass his weakest stages and get to the stronger stages where people who, you know, even if they're at your same level, uh, if they play this, you know, the same in terms of just like being able to punish you regardless or or something like that, uh, just being able to to make you because if you just try to go for like all ins versus someone or another champion, uh, which has, you know, is going to be a little bit stronger, you're just not going to, to feel strong and you're just going to lose, uh, meaning that, you know, you getting to that point of being super strong is just not going to, you know, it's going to be a lot later than than where it should be. Or at least where it needs to be in order to become the Cassante that you see in pro play. So our aim, however, is not to make Cassante an easy champion or one that anybody can pick up and play, which you know they definitely made that possible. He should absolutely be a more difficult champion who rewards deep mastery and experience. That's cool. Everybody likes that. Uh, but not a, like pretty much nobody likes the changes that happen, but we'll see. So he should not be a champion who top tier players can reliably pick in any situation. I still believe he kind of is this uh because of just everything they changed but he has a lot more counterplay even if they aren't great at Cassante specifically when a Cassante player pops off it should be clear to all that this success was earned through superior play and yeah uh given that there is a lot of counterplay that might skew pro players off of him but because he's still in ridiculous uh, champion which is good because every champion should be kind of seen as ridiculous since uh you know obviously in the the layman's turn this is obviously a video game so it should be ridiculous but in terms of just the power of every champion they should have something ridiculous that makes people want to play them and Cassante does still have that which i i think is is good obviously for the game and for Cassante in general 
So with these changes, we're asking Cassandi to commit to fights and actively outplay his opponents, which is good, right? So they're taking, uh, okay, so taking risks and take and testing his skills against theirs, meaning that he becomes, uh, well, we'll see the changes, but he just becomes more of a champion where you're, you know, you can't just opt out of, of fights with your W and stuff like that, right? We'll see. So his Q and W are less reliable. Uh, I don't know what they mean by his Q. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know what they mean by, by this. Uh. Because his Q really didn't change outside of the uh, a couple things, uh, which I guess does uh, reduce his reliability in terms of damage. But players who can consistently land their spells regardless should find even more success, which is a big difference because uh, the change to the W makes it very hard to land. His lane safety has been uh, reduced and compensated with more power to actively win. Uh, his lane safety, I would say generally hasn't been reduced. It's just the option to be more aggressive has been reduced, which uh, uh, kind of, I guess, uh, reduces his lane safety because if they know that you can't be more aggressive, uh, then, you know, uh, they can take advantage of that as opposed to being able to do both, uh, meaning it's it's very difficult to play against. And compensating with more power to actively win rather than passively scale, right? That's the big difference of pro play or of higher ELO players. They're good at passively or they're better at passively scaling as where lower ELOs aren't, right? They just want to play the game and, you know, fight people, especially if you're a top laner, right? You're mostly there because you just want to, you know, bang out, have have a big uh, joust and, and try your best to win. Now, Cassante is more like that, which I, is probably better for lower ELO. Well, it's definitely better for lower elo uh, once they uh, understand how to play the champion, right? We're also solidifying the roles of his two forms as Warden and Skirmisher, which I definitely do think they succeeded in. I feel like the changes that they did to him uh, for sure goes to this. They also still kind of left him as an assassin, but uh, it's a lot harder to play. It's like Nefiri. Nefiri form, uh, Nefiri levels of assassination because she's super easy. Right, uh, she doesn't have stuff like Zed, where you know the amount of outplay that you can do versus Zed is relatively low, as opposed to the Fury. There is a uh, very high outplay potential. Right, you can block her W. Uh, you know she doesn't have so much mobility. Her Q is is dodgeable and, and yada yada yada. Right, so he should be excellent at protecting his allies as a defensive tank. Yes. Uh, which solidifies him actually being a tank and thrive as a fighter in the smaller scale encounters he can set up with his R. His all-out E has been reshaped to fit the frequent repositioning needed in 10th 1v1s. Uh, yeah, uh, where is it? With decreased cooldown and increased speed rather than increased range, that's best used for diving squishy backline champions in teamfights, which is really good for pro play because you have to coordinate better and, you know, this just made it easier, right? Increasing the range of your E just made it easier for you to uh, get on top of someone, which if that's what you needed to win the game, hello pro play. The damage profile of his ultimate form has also been upgraded to focus on target agnostic damage. I don't even, agnostic, uh, I don't necessarily know what that means. As a monster hunter, he should be better equipped to cut down enemies of all sizes, and I definitely think he is. Overall, we expect changes of this magnitude to require some relearning. We appreciate your patience and dedication and hope you enjoy the update. No, like a lot of people didn't enjoy the update. Uh, I don't think there's many people who say that they do. I'm probably one of the only outliers. Uh, I think this is generally a better overall update. Uh, obviously, it's worse to play. I'm not necessarily a Cassante player. I've, I've dabbled and I suck at him. But I think this made him a lot better for people like me who want to dabble. And and actually uh you know have a good time playing the champion uh as opposed to before where if you didn't know you know specific things uh it made it very hard obviously with every champion regardless of how of how easy they are to play you still need to understand specific things in order to make them work better than you know uh some even easier champions right because because Cas something is still a relatively hard champion because he has uh, many buttons to press uh that are very low cooldown and that do a lot Right, so get out there and make Nazuma proud hunters. Apparently, he's a hunter, a monster hunter, I guess, which is pretty cool. I hope he shows up in the, the MMO. So the base stats, this is huge, right? So attack range used to be 175. Now it's back to 150. This is big, especially for pro play where they abuse this a lot, right? And now this with the passive change, you know, let's see, right? So the damage for the passive was 5 to 20 based on your level. Plus 1 to 2% of the target's max health based on level, right? So at level 1, you did 5 
plus 1% of the target's maximum health as physical damage, right? And then at level 6, it became 1.33. Uh, at level 11, or 1.66, and I think it uh, at level 16, it maxed out at 2%. Now, it is a flat 20 at level 1, and then at level 1, it is 1% of the target's maximum health. So that hasn't changed, and so the, the biggest change is that the flat damage is a flat 20, which you used to get at level 16, maybe level 18, and uh, now you have that at level 1, which means, obviously, that's huge for your early game for your passive hits. Uh, obviously it's still relatively low compared to the other changes, but we'll, we'll talk about it, uh, when we're finished everything. And then the, the passive target maximum health ends up having a linear increase based on level. So at level two, the amount of, uh, target maximum health damage actually gets increased, uh, every single level. So, and I believe because it does scale up to level 18, I believe at level six, it is worse. Uh, at level, like whenever this would increase, it was worse, but every level after that, it is either the same or better, right? So at level, un it's a buff in terms of the max health damage until level five at level six, it's either a little bit worse or the same. And then we can actually go to the Cassante thing. Fortunately, we don't see the, uh, the thing, right? But at level six, you see it's 1.29 where before at level six, it was 1.33. Right. And then at level seven, it becomes better. And at level 11, if we go back over here, it was 1.66. But at level 11, now it's 1.59. And then obviously at level 18 is finally 2%. And I believe at level eight, at level 16, it was 2% for uh, the other Cassante. So, you know, there's a little bit things going on with the passive. It's better for a majority of the time. And then for a little bit, certain amount of levels, uh, it's going to deal a little bit less damage specifically versus targets who have like a big HP threshold, right? But the base damage is a lot better pretty much throughout the entirety of the game, right? Uh, there's probably like specific levels where it will deal either equal, maybe a little bit less damage, but I don't think that's going to be a very big thing, right? And now new, now it causes Cassante's attacks abilities. Um, it's just every ability. I don't know why they worded it like that. Uh, Cassante's attacks abilities and passive to deal an additional uh okay right i don't i don't know you have to like proc it with your abilities but when you proc with your abilities it, it's on the attack it's the same thing i, I don't know why they wear it like this maybe they need to i don't know right but now uh when you press your ultimate your passive now deals an additional one percent plus one percent per 100 bonus resistances of the target's maximum health as physical damage while all out this matters more because when you press your ultimate you end up getting uh 50 percent bonus armor penetration right so it is going to deal a flat one percent plus a one percent per 100 bonus resistances so if you end up having 500 bonus resistances it is an extra six percent on top of you know however much this is which can end up dealing a decent amount right this is obviously going to be better versus uh champions who end up having more hp and less uh what is it less armor well actually it doesn't like if they build a little bit of armor uh because it's just like depending on the ultimate it's just better overall uh versus like tankier champions outside of versus uh squishier champions because before when you went all out it used to deal bonus true damage or just true damage in general which is extremely good versus squishies who don't buy any armor in mr because uh you know not only was it good versus them because obviously the true damage is going to be a little bit uh it's going to just deal true damage but it, it was also better versus tanks kind of because you know no matter how much armor nmr they ended up building it was going to be uh you know just true damage i would say now it's better versus champions that stack hp so scratch what i said it's better versus anybody who stacks hp and doesn't stack too many resistances as opposed to champions who stack a lot of resistances where that's what the the old one was very good at right if you stack resistances guess what I, I do true damage now making it very very hard for you to like itemize against me where now you need hp and resistances because my other abilities dealt damage as well right so no longer deals increased damage while all out so i mean it's still going to deal a lot of damage right and no longer grants 25 attack range against smart targets right so when you hit somebody with a q before the trade was was very favorable when you're going against other melee champions uh, who don't have a lot of range uh, because especially versus tanks because your q already has 350 range right the range that it's able to uh go was 465 this is from edge to zero 
or from center to edge, which kind of means it's like 350, right? And uh, then you would be able to auto attack them or space well enough to auto attack them within, you know, an extra 50 range, which is a lot, right? Uh, even if you, you like play the Nutristana, uh, the 25 range means a lot for, for everything, right? We, especially if you're someone who's very cognizant of attack range in the bot lane, right? Or if you play bot lane a lot, the, the range that a lot of champions has uh, that's over other champions does make a very big difference. And so you losing 50 range is massive, right? Especially versus a lot of champions, which makes me think that uh, proccing this passive isn't at, it's not going to be as big of a, uh, like part of your kit because it ends up putting you in a more like a unfavorable position because now you're missing 50 range as where before you would be able to auto attack people outside of their range, which was a very big bully part of that, which is also a lot more pro skewed. But then this is also, you know, it doesn't tell you anything where um, in the early game, proccing your passive isn't going to be very beneficial, even though it is because it's giving you more base damage. But uh, now it gives them more, more of a chance to trade, which is obviously possibly not in your favor. Right, so that's something you got to think about. And now his Q and then Toeful Strikes. So the mana cost used to be 28, scaling down to 20 at rank 5. Now it's the flat 20, which is very good, right? Especially because Biscuits are no longer granting mana based on how much uh, missing mana you have. This means that uh, this is kind of necessary because Biscuits used to be one of the biggest things that uh, this champion used to get. And now the Q base damage used to be 30 to 130 uh, flat. While having 40% of your AD. Obviously, you didn't used to, like, uh, get... What is it? You never used to get, like, bonus AD, right? Outside of Baron and stuff like that. Uh, and, but if you were to take something like Adaptive Force, it would end up increasing the damage on your Q by 40% of whatever you get, right? If it gave you 10, which it gives you 9. It'll give you an extra, like, 4 damage, right? Which uh, is definitely something that you can't, you know... You can't not take into account. Obviously, there's Baron. There's uh, Janna Shields. There's like a couple of things. Dragons will end up increasing your AD. So there's like a couple ways that even uh, Cassante would be able to increase uh, his, his AD. And also, or like the damage on his Q. And also, this is total AD. Which means per level, you would end up getting an increased uh, damage, right? 123 AD at level 18. 40% of that, you would get an extra like 50 damage on on your, uh, it's like 40 something, right? Uh, I don't feel like doing the math. Uh, 48 damage, whatever. Uh, you would get an extra 48 damage on this. Kind of making it similar to this, uh, but yeah. And then the bonus resistances goes up. Oh, it used to be 30% of your bonus resistances uh, would increase the damage, right? So now, uh, we let's go to the micro patch because they ended up buffing it even more, right? So outside of, uh, we could also talk about the armor. So the armor went up by three. That's amazing, right? So the Q damage used to be, uh, like it said there, but now it's 80 to 200, right? So it, it starts 80 flat, increases it by 30 every rank, which is better than the old before, uh, which is very much better, right? At level one, your Q deals 80 damage, right? Your Q deals 80 damage and your passive deals 20 flat plus 1% of the target's maximum health. So the amount of early game damage that you got was massive. Right, but no longer does it deal 40% of your AD because something at level one, 40% of 64 was what 24. Uh, you honestly, uh, 24, you would gain 20 around 24 damage, like 25 damage on this, so it'd be 55 to 80. It's like an overall increase of uh, if we're just talking about base damages, 15 here, 25 there, uh, 35 damage, which is really, really strong, right. That's that's pretty good. Every single time you end up uh, basic attacking someone at level one with your passive and your Q, whenever you do that trade, an extra 25 damage, right? And then once again, the micro patch, they ended up increasing the bonus resistances to 40% instead of 35. So if you end up having 500 bonus resistances, 40% of that, you get an extra 200 damage on your Q. That is massive, right? And then at rank five, this becomes 200, right? So 200 base. Plus, if you have 500 resistances, an extra 200, it deals 400 damage, right? That is massive. Now, the cooldown, this is a very big change. The cooldown used to be 3.5 to 1.75 based 
on how much bonuses resistances you ended up having it used to be uh capped at 250 now it's 3.5 to 2 seconds so and whenever you hit the max which is 120 bonus resistances uh it doesn't go down lower than before but it is a lot easier to end up getting the amount of bonus resistances you need in order to uh, become stronger earlier right so you can already see with the changes to the passive uh, with the changes to the damage that the early game power that you're able uh, to arise to as Cassante is massively increased right at uh there's a build right now where if you're going against a physical damage top laner you can get four chain vest each of them costing 800 gold giving 40 armor each meaning that at 2400 gold you essentially get max you get a two second q that deals a lot more base damage which is massive right and then also it increases by 40 percent of 120 which would be what, an extra 48 damage that's amazing right and you can get this super early into the game where getting this 250 was a lot later right so this is definitely heavily bringing down the like amount of time you need in the game in order to reach the strongest point of Cassante, which is good for low elo but then also because they make it so low like obviously smarter players or just people who understand the game a little bit more will come up with not only builds that will help them reach to the, this point a lot quicker but also will understand uh you know will have like they'll be trying to look for ways to access you know like smarter uh other individuals who will understand how to do this right where like if we look right now at Lolalytics right now, people are rushing, you know, Iceborne Gauntlet. Where obviously you want Iceborne Gauntlet. That's not the problem. The problem is that rushing for Chain Vest ends up being a lot better versus like physical damage champions. And then versus MR champions rushing a couple of Negatron Cloaks or whatever. Obviously it's a little different. Negatron Cloaks cost 50 more gold and give up five more MR and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I think what you could get honestly versus mr champions you can get the the max thing a little bit quicker but regardless uh we can look at the the thing right so based on resistances this it goes up or the cooldown i don't know i think every point of resistance does lower it but to be more like uh what's it called to be needy or to be more like neat Every eight seconds brings down the cooldown by 0.1, uh, which you know that's going to be. But if you even if you get like four bonus resistances, uh, yeah, you it'll go down by 0.05. I'm guessing, which probably isn't going to be very noticeable, but maybe it makes a difference, right? So yeah, uh, I do think this has like it's obviously it's going to be a lot easier for people to understand. But then if they don't understand, you know how to min max it by buying these. Uh, three chain vest or three negatron cloaks or whatever two negatron cloaks and a uh a uh, no magic mantle they're not going to understand that you know you can get a bigger spike earlier right it's still a little bit skewed towards uh like higher elo players right and then the all out cooldown modifier reduced by one with a minimum of 1.33 second minimum right so it used to be able to go down to this but now it's only reduced by 33 percent so at two seconds or uh even at max resistances i believe 33 percent of that is i think it's like 66 right it should be 66 so it does still end up going to 1.33 which is really really good right they haven't uh, changed that which means that if you know how to build the early game in order to get this, you can get a 1.33 second cooldown very, very early, which becomes very much more in your favor whenever you're fighting in lane, right? This is a huge buff to, to lane Cassante, right? And then the cast time is another big thing where it used to be, for, uh, it used to start at 0.45, go all the way down to 0.25 based on your bonus health. And now it's 0.45 to 0.35 based on your bonus resistances. Uh, where the max cap, you know, was 0.1 second uh, faster. Now it's 0.1 second slower, but you can get it a lot quicker, right? And, and now not only uh, do you not have to budget yourself into going towards more bonus health if you want like a, a faster cast time 
or budget yourself into bonus resistances if you want to have a faster cooldown or shorter cooldown now as long as you're putting gold into resistances uh, you're getting a faster cast time and a shorter cooldown and obviously more damage but this is super duper strong if you understand what you're doing right obviously like i said this is more uh high elo skew but yeah so no longer has cast time uh, has reduced cast time while all out so it's stuck at this uh and then yeah i think it used to uh, have a faster cast time uh even below this which is definitely dangerous uh but yeah and then once again slows hit while all out this means a lot for a couple of runes specifically uh i forgot what this rune was called we're gonna go over runes eventually but specifically for cheap shot for cheap shot where being able to slow somebody ends up making it uh making them take bonus damage right so you if you took cheap shot in order to have a little bit stronger lane which nobody did but let's say i, I thought at one point it was good um now when you have all out it, it'll still work which is really really strong right an extra amount of true damage is or just any amount of true damage is going to be very very good and another nerf so the whiff was changed from 150 to 100 i i feel like this isn't as noticeable but it obviously does make it a little bit more dodgeable right where if you have a lot of move speed or if you know you have a little bit of a dash the the ability to dodge this is going to be a little bit more possible right uh which you know adds to more counterplay which i haven't really seen too much about counterplay here you know, they, they, they said over here that they wanted to his Q and W are less reliable. Uh, this is ab about the, the less reliable, right? The 100. So you can't just like throw it out all willy nilly and expect it to hit all the time, right? You have to like really put it on top of the enemy champion and it, it gives them a little bit easier time to dodge it, right? So remove the 100 unit circle hitbox around Cassante for Q1. Uh, yeah. So, you know, no longer is it going to like hit them. For, I, I didn't even know this was in the game, but probably Cassante mains new, and this might be really this might be really strong for some matchups where they get on top of you or they're able to dodge, but they still want to be like very close to your body, uh, or had to do something with like your EQ, where if you EQ on top of them and they use some type of movement ability to try to dodge, but they're still on top of you, uh, it would end up hitting them, uh, which obviously is a little bit of BS, but stuff like that uh that might be something that Cassante mains talk about maybe this doesn't even matter but you know i'm not a Cassante main i'm just here talking about uh, how this should be interpreted so no longer resets upon casting r uh, i don't even know your q reset i guess this was very strong for level six because obviously uh, you have to budget for bonus resistances or for bonus hp in order to get you know lower uh where uh if you q auto and then press r and then Q, like it, you would have your Q auto backup, so your burst would be a little bit higher. Uh, but now, obviously, at level six, if you don't buy any items before level six, uh, your your in, your insta burst is not going to be as strong. Uh, but uh, as at least as strong as before, because you could Q auto R Q auto right uh, and and stuff like that. Uh, so I think overall, this is very good. Obviously, there's still a, a lot of things here that are pretty high elo skewed i think these two are very high elo, high elo skewed uh where you know you're gonna see a lot more people dodging especially in uh in asia or in china korea where the the ping is very very low and so the ability to counterplay a champion like uh Cassante, especially for these or to like react to the q is going to be a lot easier right and, and like the the ability to the dodge is going to be easier with these two specific ones and then obviously with the the cooldown or the cast time being a little higher uh and then uh the cooldown being a little higher right gives a little bit more counterplay especially to like the pro setting or to low ping setting right so uh some people in, in eu west or some people in eu i believe there's the new server in like uh i don't i don't think it's like sun in uh the middle east i think they have low ping for many people but everyone who has high ping, uh, this isn't going to be soup. Like, it's going to be, a f like, definitely a detriment. But I would say not as much because it's a little bit harder to react. But, yeah. So, now we go to the W, Pathmaker. So, the damage 
uh, was changed relatively uh, a lot, right? So the damage used to be 20 to 100 plus 50 percent of your AD, uh, like we saw. Uh, this is gone, meaning that there's a, a good amount of base damage gone from it, uh, which actually is very different. Right? Plus 85 percent of your bonus resistances, uh, plus six to 10 percent of the target's maximum health, depending on level, right? So this was very dependent on like base levels or or ranking it up. Right, because obviously the fifty percent AD is it scales with base levels, and then every time you put a point into it, not only did you gain twenty flat damage, but you gained one percent uh, more uh, maximum health damage. It was physical damage. I don't know why it doesn't state that, but whatever. So now it it deals twenty flat more damage at every rank up to one hundred twenty, and it now deals a flat eight percent. So the rank three uh, of the target's maximum health as tar it still target it still targets maximum health. And now it deals increased uh, plus 2% per 100 bonus resistances. So if you end up having 500 bonus resistances, it now deals an extra 10%. But it now doesn't, I would say it doesn't have as much base damage because even at level one, Cassante ends up having 64 AD, right? So at level one, the W, I think I could get rid of this. Can I? Okay, no. Uh, the W uh, used to deal just more damage at level one, right? Uh, because 50% of that would be plus 32 at level one. You would never go W level one, but let's say you know, it's just for damage testing purposes and the way that the the game works, right? Especially since the, the target's maximum health will not be very high the lower, uh, the lower level they are, right? Especially since, uh, you know, you can't take into account how many grass procs they have. Uh, and then the Doran's items don't give too much, but they give some. And stuff like that. And then you're not going to have any bonus resistances just yet, right? Uh, if you go Dorn Shield and you don't go like No Magic Mantle or uh, Claw Farmer and stuff like that. But yeah, the base damage will always be higher uh, for old Consante as opposed to now. But the damage towards a lot towards champions who have more max HP will pretty much always be higher. Where the old Pathmaker was really good at bursting low HP targets because it dealt a lot of. It dealt more base damage than it did uh, max health damage. So versus someone who has 2k HP, uh, and let, let's say you're level 18 Cassante, uh, this would deal 62 more, we'll say 62 uh, at level thing. It would deal 162 plus 85% of your bonus resistances. Let's say you have 1,000 plus 850. Right, so it would deal a thousand damage. As opposed to now, if you have a thousand, this will deal only a flat 120 right uh, and then that's without even talking about the 10 percent maximum health right and then 10 percent of a champion with 2000 max hp is 200 right so we'll deal 1200 damage to them before uh um, you know you take into account damage reduction because it's physical damage and then obviously when you were all out it used to deal was it true damage where was it yeah oh wait no i think it just used to deal the same damage you just so yeah but yeah so this was really good at bursting down squishies as opposed to now the amount of damage towards anybody is based off of their maximum HP because it has a flat 120 base damage, right? And that's without taking into account uh, whatever, right? Because if you have 1,000 resistances, 1,000 bonus resistances, it now deals an extra 28% of the target's maximum health. That is a lot, right? So now it deals a maximum of 180 to 500 damage against monsters, which I guess this is really good for like bursting down like Baron and stuff, uh, because obviously those end up having a lot of maximum HP, meaning that if you were, you know, Cassante and let's say it didn't have a cap, this could easily, if you get like even somewhere to like 500, uh, what is it? 500 bonus resistances. Or even let's say 600, right? So it gets a, a, a flat 20% of the target's maximum HP. Uh, if Baron ends up having 10k, you do 20% of that, it'll deal 2,000, which means that they would have ended up having this. Uh, maybe that would even change Cassante to be like a jungler. I doubt it, but that would just mean that having Cassante on your team pretty much means that you can't outsmite Cassante's team, which obviously so they have to they have to add a damage camp. But this does mean that you know you have like an extra 500 damage. I don't know what this is. Uh, maybe we could uh, see that real quick. I don't know. I think this is per per rank. So that's also very big. Uh, if you end up maxing W second, which I don't think you should. 
okay so now another big change the cooldown used to be 24 going down to 16 at rank 5 now it's 14 going down to 10 seconds that is huge right not only is the initial w 10 seconds lower which means that's extremely good for lane especially when people have uh a lot of champions end up having abilities that are one point wonders that you know they have relatively high cooldowns right which is how Cassante w was but now uh before like let's say even fiora we can go to to fiora right fiora's w ends up having a 24 second cooldown it's the same thing as Cassante. now Cassante is 10 seconds shorter so in in matchups uh where you know you use your w Obviously, there's a lot less, a lot more counterplay for Fiora now, but uh, in matchups versus a lot of other champions, right? Aatrox E, Aatrox W, Aatrox Third Q, stuff like that. You get to match a, a lot of champions' important spells with this. A uh, very early into the game, making it a lot easier to play because it gives you damage reduction, because it gives you movement, uh, or like just it's a dash or something like that, uh, because of a lot of things, right? Which for me makes Cassante a little bit better in the mid lane versus champions who, you know, are very reliant on burst combos, meaning that having this very, very low cooldown, uh, you can end up reducing a lot of their damage while also, you know, getting uh, wave priority and stuff like that. Because you're never going to hit them with the ability, especially since they're ranged, but you can hit the minions and get them all together and then get like a, a nice little Q in order to, to start, uh, like, in order to pretty much get rid of waves and stuff like that, right? But yeah, so now the minimum cast time. This is big. Uh, my bad if you heard me hit the mic. Uh, the minimum cast time. So it used to be 0.75, which was a big change from before because you were able to tap W and then set up your Q3, right? Where now it is 0 0.0 or 0 0.4. This kind of brings back the tap W into uh, Q3 at a certain amount of bonus resistances. I tested it and I will test it again later in the video when we get into the the part where I go to the, what's it called, to the practice tool, but at 60 resistances, uh, you can pretty much guarantee, as long as you hit them with a tap W, you can guarantee to hit your Q3, which is huge to flip them into tower, to uh, just bring them closer away from their, their side of the map, uh, depending on what side, uh, doesn't matter what side are they on, but you're going to flip them and then you can press R if that, you know, an all out's going to win you the fight, right? Uh, so that's a very big thing that people probably aren't uh, used to because they've played Cassante so long where that was just not possible, right? But now there's a certain there's a certain amount of resistances you need in order for that to be possible again, which is very, very big, right? And that's another knowledge check. That's something that you have to play enough games in order to even understand. You have to even know the possibilities of this. You have to go into the practice tool. You have to have somebody who plays Cassante or who wants to figure stuff out about Cassante in order to tell others, right? This is another thing that is more high elo skewed, right? Knowledge is more high elo skewed because, you know, higher elo players got to there because they seek out knowledge where lower elo people, they're just chilling, right they're just chilling playing the game it's a fun game right so there's that then the maximum cast time used to be 1.5 which you know in order to get the full damage in order to get the full stun duration you needed to to charge it up a lot uh now it's one second right which means that you're going to get the damage a lot quicker you're going to get the uh everything a lot quicker right so we'll now go partial distance if not fully charged uh I don't know what this means, uh, but I'm guessing, you know, obviously that makes sense, right? Like you should go as far as you charged it, right? It has a bar. It shows while it's charging how far you should go, but I don't know. Maybe it didn't do that before. You know, I'm not a Cassandra player. Maybe somebody can tell me what this is, right? So the stun duration used to be 1.25 seconds. Uh, I think, I don't think, I, it's hard to tell, right? I don't think... Uh, it used to be that as long as you hit it maybe it was i don't know but okay so now it's 0 0.5 to 1.5 based on charge duration uh so if you tap it 0.5 second w or 0.5 second stun right and if you get to charge it for one second it is 1.5 but they micro patched it so the the short stun is still 0.5 but the max stun is 1.75 which is pretty big right because not only is this a stun but it's an aoe stun so you're able to stun the entire team, theoretically, and even minions and stuff like that, and monsters, uh, not epic monsters, but 
you're able to stun them for 1.75 seconds if you get a fully one second charge w which is you know very good right and now the big part that people don't like uh, don't like uh about the change right because something can no longer change the direction after casting this spell which means if your mouse is pointed towards the enemy nexus and you press w it's gonna go towards the enemy nexus right regardless of what what you do regardless if you charge it regardless if you just let it go or you tap it you're going towards the enemy nexus uh, and another thing is that Kasante will always point towards the direction of where he's going meaning that there's just a lot more visual cues of how Kasante is playing the game, meaning that there's a lot more counterplay towards Kasante, which is good for the, the game in general, but obviously that's not good for Kasante, right? Because now there's counterplay versus him. And if there's counterplay versus you, it makes it harder to play Kasante, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad thing for the game overall, right? It's just bad for Kasante because you've been playing this form of Kasante where there wasn't very much counterplay versus you for six months plus, but now there is, and now you have to get used to it, right? So there's that. Uh, yeah, where before you were able to, you know, even cast the spell looking towards the enemy champion, but then go backwards, right? So sometimes that would, like, even if you look at pro play, if you look at a lot of things, uh, that could bait a lot of people to either use their, their dashes or use flash, even use important spells. And you could dodge it out like that, making cause something very, very hard to play against. Uh, which, you know, that level of control over a game is not really seen. There's not too many champions who have that much level of control. Kasante was one of them. You know, I, I feel like that's uh, racism. I'm just kidding. But, uh, yeah, that's out the game, which I think is good. And now, while in all out, and now deals an additional 0 to 110% of his damage as true damage based on charge time, which means that, let's go back to the point where it deals 20 percent of a target's maximum health now it's going to deal an additional 20 percent as true damage meaning that Cassante is very very good versus hp stackers right and even if they build resistances you now have a form of true damage and stuff like that right uh versus a champion right every champion in the game most champions in the game will have anywhere from uh 2.4k to 2.5 like or to 3k it's like i think the max or the most base hp a champion gets is like 2.8 uh so without like any other thing that's just per level and stuff right so versus a champion with 2.4k which is the majority of squishy champions if you end up having 20 percent of their maximum health with this before resistances you're dealing 480 base and then 480 true damage right <laughs> meaning that you're gonna this ability still nukes it still nukes if you get a lot of bonus resistances. So you have to keep that in mind. Kasante can still deal a lot of damage, but his damage comes out slower and it doesn't come out as quickly. And it's a lot easier to dodge, right? So, excuse me. I don't know what happened. My nose is a little clogged. But so look, the all out damage reduction on the W goes from 60 to 75%. So you get an extra 15% damage reduction, which is once again, that's a lot of damage reduction, right? Especially since you end up losing a lot of your resistances when you go into the all-out form. So it no longer charges more quickly in all-out, meaning that it's still, you know, if you want to get that big burst of damage, it's still uh, one, you have to, you know, go for an entire one second, which I believe is about the same amount of time uh, as before, because I believe it charged, if not like 50% quicker, maybe 75 or, or maybe a little bit less, 25% quicker, 40% quicker. I don't remember. I think it was like 50%. So it used to be to get the maximum cast time was like 0.75 uh, as opposed to now where it's one second, right? So obviously it's 0.25 seconds slower, but it's still very fast and it still does a lot of damage. So just this spell overall, if you're able to hit it, because obviously uh, this is a very dodgeable spell now, very, very dodgeable. Uh, if you're able to land it, it will deal massive damage. Now we go to the E. So this was this is uh, the the spell that they ended up putting on cons or changing to about Cassante, which makes him more of a warden and kind of a little bit more of a diver. So the cooldown was changed at all ranks, goes down by 0.5, but now has a 50% recoil uh, recoil uh, recoil bomber reduced cooldown while in your all-out form, which means 
at levels at level six, right? Uh, since you're not gonna put, you don't have the ability to put any points into any other spell because you're gonna have three points Q, one point W, one point E, right? That means that when you press R at level six, this instantly goes to five seconds, which is ridiculous. I would say that is amazing. You get five seconds cut off your your E. That is incredible for the amount of power that it ends up giving you. And then, which I do believe maxing E at level 13 is the best uh, because the base stats are really, really strong uh, as opposed to the W where the only thing you get from this is one second off and 20 base damage on the E. You end up gaining, where is it? I believe it's 40 shield and then uh, half a second off, which means a little bit more because the half a second becomes one entire second when you press your R. So it's just a little bit better. And then, you know, this scales a little bit more where uh, E doesn't scale too much because it scales off of bonus health, which there's not many items that Cassante wants that end up having bonus health. Right. So and then also it allows you to just be a lot more tankier in the game. So, yeah, you get the 50% reduced cooldown and it no longer grants increased range while in all out. I believe it used to grant like 400 or something like that. Or, or like 300. I think it was 400. Which was huge, right? That, that was the thing that they were talking about where it's, you know, less for single target diving somebody. Now, you know, there's other ways to use it. And it no, no longer resets Cassante's basic attack, which was another thing that people do not like. I can not say at level 16, uh, because of the changes to the ultimate, which it now gives a lot more, a lot more attack speed. Uh, at level 16, your E isn't, it's still not an auto attack reset, but it's a lot more smoother uh, to like, to... So like Q auto E, you know, has like a probably like 0.3 second, uh, not probably like 0.1 second wait time in order to auto attack again. But it's essentially you still have the reset. You just have to wait to level 16 in order to get all that attack speed, which are ultimate. But yeah, this is huge for definitely more skilled players. Right. Once again, there's a lot of ways to end up playing Asante to get a lot of value, not only from the shield, but from the reset on the basic attack, that's really, really powerful for like a burst combo, right? So there's that. Uh, and now it no longer goes over walls while all out, which was definitely a big part. This is just to like, if you're freely using E and not using it on a teammate, it no longer goes over walls, right? So if you're just trying to escape someone, uh, and you're 1v1, there's no one else around. You used to be able to use your E to go over walls. Now that is not possible, which is definitely better because, you know, that's just, just another way of, of taking counterplay out of that, out of him. But obviously, uh, I would say it's not the worst because this new Cassante kind of wants to be on top of you because he, he deals a lot more damage. Obviously, there's there's times where, you know, you might not be able to fight two or three people and, and you're getting ganked and stuff, and this will end up having you die instead of being able to live. But, you know, there's not many champions that should be able to live in those situations, right? Only specific champions should be able to get out of that. And, and like, you know, ADC champions should also uh, have this kind of removed from them. But it is what it is. So dash speed. Regular dash speed it used to be 900. Now it's 500 plus your movement speed. So Cassante's base movement speed is 330 so it goes down by 70 right but once you get boots if you get any items that give you percentage move speed or any like type of move speed if you end up getting swiftness boots it's only minus 10 but because i think swiftness boots ends up giving you uh an extra 15 actually no it's e it's equal if you have uh, swiftness boots and then the dash speed to ally is unchanged and then the all-out dash speed goes up by 50. So the all-out dash speed will be a lot quicker, right? This means a lot. Uh, and then the all-out dash speed to ally is even quicker. goes up by 300, right? So the solo dash is a lot slower. It's not that much slower. Like, I don't know. People feel like, people say it's slower, but it should be slower in the early game. It's like 70, 70 speeds slower, which is probably noticeable if you play a lot of games. But I would say it's not that noticeable. I'd say it's more noticeable because the way that you build Cassante should be stacking resistances uh, very, very early. 
right? Which means you're not going to get boots. You're, you know, used to, you used to want to get boots very, very early because it gave you so much power. Uh, and even though the, that these boots end up being better, uh, because they give you 2% more, uh, uh, if you get the armor boots, which you should be getting them, they give you 2% more damage reduction on basic attacks. But this, it just ends up being faster. Like they really turbo buffed this, right? The only thing they took out was the increased range on, uh, on all out, which is pretty big. Uh, they, they took away the basic attack reset, which, you know, you don't necessarily need it. It was pretty good. And then they took the ability to take, uh, to use it over walls. Uh, if you're just, you know, in a one V one situation, if there's no teammates around, you know, you being able to dash to a teammate is st over a wall is still there. At least when you're in all out, uh, you know, we'll go into the practice tool and test it out, but yeah. Uh, but they ended up 50% reduced cooldown. This is huge, right? So in situations where you're diving with someone, Right, let's say you end up having a nocturne on your team. Uh, you can press your all out button and you can just start shielding them every like let's say you max the second, right? You can start shielding them every four seconds for uh, because you have it maxed, it will do 240 shielding to yourself and to your teammate plus 15% of your bonus health. So like the E easily can get to like 500 shield. Which means you're giving a thousand shield or a thousand worth of effective HP to yourself and to a teammate. It's very, very disgusting. Right? And also can be used against divers. Right? If there's an enemy Mundo running at your ADC, now you give them a 500 HP shield every four seconds. And, you know, you're kind of a pseudo support champion, which is good, right? It's a very big change in the play style where before, you know, you had a lot of agency in diving the enemy team. Now you don't have as much, but you have a lot more agency in helping your team, which is pretty good, I would say. You still deal a lot of damage and yada, yada, yada. It's a big difference, though. So now with the ultimate, the all out. So the damage used to be 70 to 150 plus 65% of your AP. This only mattered when you had Baron, right? Baron gives flat stats to everybody as magic damage. And now it's 80 to 150 as physical damage. So at level 6, it's a little bit more. Level 11, it's a little bit more because you are putting points into this every single time. Uh, maybe. I think you are. Uh, maybe not. I would say the level 11 doesn't matter as much. Ooh. Oh, this is actually bad. Uh, but the fact that level 11 doesn't give you that much... I would say until you can get level 16 ultimate, which would be like level 15 and then 16, I would say it doesn't mean as much. Uh, because I think the cooldown, let me see, does the cooldown go down every time you rank it up? It does go down by 20. Uh, and then you kind of, okay, so yeah, you, you do put a point in because like without your ultimate, you're not as strong as of a, of a champion, I would say, uh, especially now, right? So yeah, you put a point into this every time you can. If the cooldown didn't get lowered, uh, I would say that it's probably best to not put points into this until you can get level 16 ultimate, which would be at 15 and 16. But scratch my words, put a point into this every time you can because without your ultimate, you're not as strong. So the damage, like I said, the follow-up damage when you put someone over a wall used to deal the same damage uh, as the, the base one did. Now it's the same damage, except it has a 5% bonus health ratio, which is not that big. Because like I said, you don't get that much bonus health uh, right, you get more, you're more of a champion that scales off resistances, but, uh, obviously this is fine, right? If you end up getting what, like 1500 bonus health, it'll deal an extra 75 damage. Yeah. It deals physical damage too. So now the duration is down by five seconds, right? But it gives you more attack speed. So at rank one gives you 15 more at rank two, 25 more. And at rank three, 35 more. That is huge. Right, but now it grants 50% bonus armor penetration. Now it grants 20% Omni Vamp, which is very strong because now you heal for uh, the items that you end up having. You heal for true damage. You heal for, like, if there's a teammate that ends up giving you some type of bonus damage, uh, I believe this will end up healing for more. Because uh, I would need to go back into the patch notes to see uh, what this means, right? I think I can go over here real quick and go to like release Cassante. Let me see. No longer heals for the damage dealt to champion for the duration. I don't know if this took into account all damage dealt, which means that it would kind of be a nerf. 
right? But uh, because it would be the same thing, right? If it's all if it's just damage dealt, it, it doesn't mean that it changed anything. Uh, Omnivamp. I don't think Omnivamp still has like does Omnivamp have reduced. Uh, I'm never the tournament for damage dealt to minions. I guess now you can heal off of minions and monsters and epic monsters. While also, I don't think Omnivamp has reduced. I think they got rid of it. Where yeah, uh, has been for area damage or damage done by pets. Spell vamp. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Omnivamp? Come on. I don't know. It doesn't tell me too much, right? Does Omnivamp have reduced healing on, on like, uh, AoE spells? Stuff like that? I don't think so. I think with 1410, they ended up changing that. So this might overall be better, right? Because it gives you more healing versus minions, which means if you're fighting in a minion wave and you get a maxed out W and you hit the enemy champion and minions, you heal for, a you know, a good amount more. Right, you don't have to simply hit champions in order to heal, which is pretty big. That can be big, mostly for like laning, uh, Kasante. Because outside of lane, uh, like if you're fighting around Baron, I guess a big thing would be if you hit Baron with your W as well, and you're gonna heal for a massive amount. But I think it has reduced 33% against the uh, minions and monsters, like we saw. So I think overall it's like more healing, especially since it used to only be 10. Uh, and now you get an extra 10 at rank 6 and an extra 5 at rank 11. And then at level 16, it's it's evened out. Uh, so overall, this is just better, right? The big thing is that now you don't deal true damage, which are passive when you go into all-out form. And then you lose cast time on your ultimate. Uh, so I would say the biggest thing with your ultimate, um, if you get level 6, unless you can outright kill someone with your level 6, it's better to base, buy items, and then go for all-ins because uh, you don't get as much as you used to uh, when you activated your ultimate, right? Before, you used to get, what was it, uh, faster charge time on your W, which uh, now you don't get that. Uh, you used to get, uh, that's pretty much it, right? Uh, you used to get faster, like, uh, cast time on your Q, faster, like, cooldown on your Q as well. And then you used to get more damage on your passive, where if you don't buy resistances and you press your all-out button, you're just missing all of that. You're missing a good amount of damage, right? The only thing you get is more damage on your W, but if they have their flash or if they have any, you know, movement thing and you miss your W, you pretty much lose a lot of the damage from it. You also get more uh, cooldown on your E, but in terms of a 1v1, it probably means a good amount because you have, like, a lot more effective HP at level 6. Uh, you're going to have an extra 80 or like an extra th i believe it was uh i don't remember how much it was uh i think it was 50 but yeah you're gonna get like an extra uh 80 now or an extra 30 plus 15 percent of whatever your bonus hp is but yeah uh so i think plus an extra five percent of your bonus hp so i think uh yeah so let's go into the let's go into runes right so Sure. So there was two rune pages that I saw. Atreus, uh, I guess the rank one, uh, Cassante in an A. Maybe it's the rank one. I maybe he would say that like pro players are better than him at at Cassante, or maybe there's another player uh, and stuff like that. But that's who I've been watching because obviously he's playing the new Cassante, or they're playing the new Cassante. So he's primarily gone either grasp or inspiration while also making sure to take ultimate hunter. Right. So. Uh, there is that I, versus ranged. He would primarily primarily take inspiration because obviously you're not really going to get many grass procs. Uh, and then, you know, you get unsealed spell book, which is very good for all ins at level six, which, like I said, you kind of want to base before that. But, uh, you know, magical footwear is good. Biscuits is pretty good. Uh, triple tonic, not as good. Uh, and then, you know, you can get cosmic insight. You can get uh, approach velocity. You can get this. And obviously he always went domination for ultimate hunter because, uh, you know, you you would get really good. Uh, you get really good value out of this because if when you have your ultimate, you become super duper strong, right? I do think that there is a like 
you can end up taking fleet so fleet was buffed for like melee champions obviously because you're not building any bonus ap you're not going to get that much value from this as opposed to like a uh, yone yasuo and stuff where they might end up getting 200 bonus uh ad which means like it's only an extra 20 they would get which i would say is not that big right but what this does is it ends up giving you the the healing obviously for lane for versus uh range champions right and then Cassandra doesn't necessarily have like mana struggles so you don't need presence of mind and you could go like absorb life and then what it allows you to get is legend haste which i do believe that Cassandra ends up having really good like synergy with ability haste now because with your w being so low cooldown with your e being so low cooldown you want to get them even lower cooldown because these are very very big portions of your kit meaning that i do believe buying haste or getting haste whenever possible is definitely a good thing and then last stand just makes sense as this champion plus it also makes sense versus range champions who are going to be bullying you meaning that uh, you make a, a lot more usefulness uh, and you get a lot more usefulness out of the persistent tree than a couple other champions can, right? And so I think this is something that might end up popping up. Uh, I might try it myself, but yeah. And then the domination, I think when you're going this, because you end up having a good amount of healing in your kit, uh, you have two choices. The domination tree is really good, but you're obviously not going to be able to use cheap shot. And then Atreus, even like in other, like I, he hasn't done precision uh, tree primary yet, but he would go sudden impact, which I think is very good. Right. I do think that cheap shot is better, but it is a little bit more difficult to use, especially versus range champions. But he takes sudden impact versus everybody uh, where uh, cheap shot ends up out damaging sudden impact as long as you get two applications before the cooldown of sudden impact comes online. But sudden impact is i would say is really good versus uh like range champions because the only time you're going to be able to get on top of them is when you have your shield and then the cooldown of the e matches the cooldown of your shield especially early until you're able to put another point into it which would be i believe level eight or level seven i think it's level seven and then it's still relatively the same right uh so i would say if you're trying to be a little bit more or if you're your gameplay ends up needing ultimate hunter in order to make it uh you know that much better i would say this is probably the best rune page but if you end up needing to be a little bit more defensive or the enemy champion ends up having a lot of damage where you want to go as much healing as possible let's say this just gives you the the best choice or let's just say that you know your ultimate isn't as useful and you rather get other runes that are just that much stronger i think that as a secondary tree if you're going you know precision or even going inspiration first i think uh revitalize is i did the math and revitalize is a little bit worse than overgrowth uh because let's say you end up getting 300 hp from overgrowth the amount of like shielding this gives you because it's 15 percent bonus health will end up giving you 45 shield on every time you end up shielding and because you can shield a teammate and because the cooldown is so low this is possibly 90 shielding like at level 13 uh every four seconds until you know your your all out timer is gone which can you know the the, the cooldown goes still goes down uh when your all out timer uh ends meaning that you get four applications of it at level 13 if you're maxing your E second, meaning that you can get a total of 360 bonus HP in a in an all-out thing if you're able to survive during your, your ultimate, which is pretty good, right? But the 5%, let's say you end up having your shield goes for 500, right? Uh, the 5% is only 25, but it gets 10% stronger on targets below 40%. Uh, the one thing that makes this not as good is the fact that it doesn't have something where a lot of like uh a lot of uh things like let's look at last stand last stand the damage increase you get starts at 60 percent and then it gets maximum at 30 where revitalize doesn't have anything like that where it starts giving you higher shield value at like 70 70 percent health and then it gets maximum at 40 and just you have to be below 40 percent in order to get the maximum value so while Cassante's ultimate does end up making him have only 65 percent of his maximum hp it's still you're not going to get the full value out of this until someone's below 40 percent which is not that good 
But just given how many shields you can end up giving, I think this is probably the best one. Obviously, Overgrowth is going to be more consistent, but Revitalize has the opportunity of giving just more throughout the game. And then it also synergizes with a lot, a couple items, Unending the Spare, Spare Visage, uh, what's this thing called? Winter's Approach or Fimbo Winter, uh, you know, anything that ends up giving healing and shielding, let's say uh, Lock Hit or Redemption ends up being one of the best, like, uh, things in the game uh, or one of the a good item on Cassante eventually uh, maybe it is maybe it isn't revitalize is gonna make a little bit more sense right so i think revitalize is fine uh shield bash oh we'll just talk about uh, over here and then i think conditioning is, is is super duper strong right so i think f like the precision tree arguably has one of the best like uh synergies with Cassante, especially now because he does benefit a, a good amount from haste uh, so i think this is good and then there is the full like um the full what is it damage like build you can end up going i would say this is really good versus melee champions who you can trade on specifically versus other tanks so why is this good? Because you're going to want to be using your shield. You're going to be able to get auto attacks off when you have your passive stacked on them. And the ability to like basic attack them is a lot more uh, frequent than it is versus a couple of other like bruiser champions who end up having a lot of dashes. And so they can end up dodging a couple of your Qs or like spacing your, your basic attacks and stuff like that as we're tanks. Uh, you know, they're a little bit easier to get on because Kazante himself has dashes and has a lot of counterplay versus these slow acting champions, right? Or these slower acting champions. So, of course, you go Grasp and Grasp is, is good not only because you're a champion that will end up having a higher max HP, meaning that you're going to be healing. But I can't say that Grasp um, always heals less than Fleet Footwork until you end up having like 8k HP because 1.2% of your maximum health if you have 4k is only 40 right you need somewhere around like 100 or like 12,000 hp in order for grasp to give you massive healing which is pretty cool or to give you as much healing as what's it called as fleet footwork and obviously it only works versus champions where fleet also gives you healing versus minions but obviously grasp has a lot of other usefulness uh Whereas then it gives you an increase of 7 HP every time you proc it. And then it also deals massive damage, right? It deals 3.5% of your maximum HP, right? Uh, which is very big for uh, for trades and stuff, right? Uh, so it's just different. If you're versus melees, Grasp is always going to be the best. Even if, you know, it's versus champions who can dodge and stuff. But yeah, Grasp is amazing. So now Shield Bash ended up getting buffed in this entire uh, patch. I don't, I think, uh, where's it over here? Okay, all the way down here, <laughs> right? So Shield Bash, it used to give you resistances, which I think would have been good because I do think the bonus resistances that it gives you is, would end up increasing the shielding uh, or the, not the shielding, the damage your Q would do and stuff like that and would lower the cooldown and stuff. But now it scales off a little bit more bonus health and it scales a little bit more on how much you end up shielding Meaning that if you're maxing your E second, it's going to deal a little bit more damage, right? So the your the base uh, HP of the shield at rank 5 is 240. So 50% of that is 36. So you will get an extra 36 damage every time you proc shield bash just off the base, uh, you know, rank out of, out of a max rank E. Right? So that's very good. Obviously, uh, I mean, if you're looking for sustained, Font of Life is probably you know you would instead of taking font of life you would probably just go for for the the precision tree right uh i would say font of life if you're going to precision tree and you're taking revitalize font of life is probably not that bad but it won't you know you have to damage an enemy champion and so the entirety point of the precision tree is the fact that you don't have to interact with the enemy champion as much in order to get a good amount of healing right so Font of Life is probably just not a good rune on Cassante, unless we start seeing like support Cassante or something, because you know that W cooldown is very low, and given a couple of items, you can end up having a really cool thing. Uh, we might end up seeing support Cassante. Uh, we might see a Korean support Cassante reach like uh, Grandmaster or something. We'll see. 
right? The Molish is obviously really strong because you are a very strong early game champion, meaning that if you just outplay the opponent, you know, land all your spells or whatever, force them to go back, uh, your opportunity to use the Molish is going to be a lot higher because your uh, damage is a lot higher, meaning that, you know, you're going to be able to bully people out of lane, meaning that, you you know, you're going to get demolished procs, right? I would say this isn't as good later into the game, or it's just fine whenever, right? Because you're going to be very strong regardless. Uh, but I don't know. If you're just trying to trade, like, Shield Bash kind of does the same thing, where it's going to get... It just adds more damage. Uh, I don't know. It's up to you if, you know, the Cassante players or Atreus himself has said that, you know, uh, Shield Bash isn't as good because you're already going to have enough damage to put yourself in a good spot for Demolish. So if you find that, maybe there's matchups where Shield Bash actually becomes very strong because, you know, without it, uh, you know, your trades are a little bit more uh, favored toward the enemy champion and stuff like that. I doubt it. But we'll see. Probably Demolish is just better. I think Conditioning ends up scaling super duper good with this champion. You get a lot of damage from your bonus resistances. Depending on how you end up itemizing, you could end up getting a, an entire 40 bonus resistances from Conditioning. Like, uh, because there's more armor in the game than there is MR. You can end up getting somewhere like 27 uh, armor, like 13 MR, or like 26 armor and like 18 MR and stuff like that from this giving you a good amount more damage, right? Uh, and not only that, but it's it's pretty much for free. And I think early game, uh, this ends up applying to your, your passive, right? To your cooldowns. So it gives you 16 in total. And then also gives you, it'll probably give you 10, uh, 10 armor or like 10 armor and MR, giving you 20 resistances, which can add on to your, uh, your uh the cooldown of your Q and stuff I'm, I'm gonna test this i didn't test it before making the video which is my bad obviously second win is really strong uh, and then bone plating. i don't think you necessarily need bone plating versus champions uh too much right uh i think you're strong enough right bone plating is really good versus super strong early game champions that if you're not able to like uh if you want to get like xp they're gonna try to bully you off of xp you can use the bone plating to like really change the tides i would say this entire tree or this entire part of the tree is very dependent on the game uh, or like like i would say take into account the higher elo uh, atrox or atrox Cassante players in order to see which one's better i do just know that conditioning just scales the best especially for Cassante. so if you're able to get out of lane without needing second wind or without needing bone plating conditioning will give you so much right and then you know we already went over this I think that unflinching is just not that good. Revitalize is probably the best in given situations. And then overgrowth is going to be the <coughs> the, the most uh, a consistent one, right? Uh, as opposed to revitalize, where revitalize gives you more early because it'll give you that 5% initially as where uh, overgrowth takes a little bit of time in order to get to that, you know, max, like give you a good amount of additional maximum health. But yeah, you can go this. Uh, and then, like I said, cheap shot versus, like, let's say you're going against an Orn or, or, like, even a Cyan or something, or even a Mundo, right? And they want to, like, contest waves and just be around the minions. Uh, you This will give you massive damage, right? Because you're going to be able to get on top of them. Sudden Impact is really good versus very short trades, right? Champions who, which is kind of how the, the game is played, right? Where uh, if you're not, a, if you have to concede, the uh the minion wave and stuff like that or you just have to play around very big cooldowns sudden impact is probably going to be the best uh but yeah it, it just depends on on how fights will be if they're constant right if it's basically revolving around every single one of your your q cooldowns early game getting cheap shots is going to be a lot better as where uh if it's more revolving around your e and your w whether you're able to trade sudden impact is going to be better right and then the only other one that's really strong here is ultimate hunter uh, i would say that's probably the best one and so then we can go into the the minor runes. Uh, so over here, a lot of people take attack speed. Uh, attack speed is really good for if you want to like control minion waves, right? Because the more you're able to auto attack the minions, the more you're able to you know lower the HP so that you can end up you know uh, having as much 
uh, damage on them as possible so that you can control minion waves and stuff like that, right? You can kill minions a little bit quicker and stuff. But I think with the damage increase to his Q, you have enough. There's so many changes. You have enough uh, mi minion or like, yeah, minion manipulation to not care about needing this attack speed. And so you can end up getting ability haste, which will scale a lot better, right? Obviously, eight is not that much. But when you end up getting some of his uh, best items, right? Let's say you end up getting Iceborne Gauntlet. Let's say you end up getting Frozen Heart. Now you end up having 43 haste, which is around 22% uh, CD on your abilities. Meaning that at rank five, your E will end up being like... Uh, 6.4 seconds somewhere around that and then you know when you go all out it's 3.6 instead of four seconds so it's it's a little bit better right and then your w gets the increase or the the lowering of the cooldown right and if you end up getting something like unending despair if you end up getting something like spear visage and really going for a lot of haste uh it can end up being really strong i i do think that you now scale a lot better with haste so going this is, is pretty good obviously at level one it's a lot weaker than attack speed but at level one, the way that Cassante trades isn't cognizant of attack speed, right? Uh, your passive kind of allows you, well, like when you hit them with your Q, your passive, the wind up time on it is a lot quicker than your regular auto attack. So you don't necessarily need the attack speed. Um, this is something that needs testing. Um, so I'm going to test it out personally. But as of right now, I would say just take attack speed. It probably just feels better. Right, but I do think ability haste can end up being hidden OP, uh, or like just uh, overall more useful. So in the second row, uh, you don't scale off of AD anymore, so don't ever take that. The move speed doesn't matter, so you always take the health. And as of right now, people are going, oh, they're going to nasty and slow for whatever reason. Okay, never take that. Uh, that one's the worst. Uh, people sometimes people end up going the flat health, which is pretty good. Right, there's probably a usefulness of this uh, versus specific champions, especially if you're trying to take something like bone plating and maybe play like an, a decent, a, a little bit more decent early game. There's probably something like that. But besides that, getting an extra 360 HP at level 18, uh, you know, the 15% bonus health of your E ends up equating to an extra like four, like 50 hp on your shield which means that if you do it on an extra target you're getting an extra 100 uh, effective hp uh, in your team right just off having these two which is i would say very very big so if you don't need if you if there's a specific way where you can end up utilizing the extra 55 hp from this at level one i would say you'd probably take this but if not you always take the the, the health scaling or the double health scaling right so i think this is really good Obviously, you can take uh, attack speed, but yeah, this is pretty much the rune page that uh, somebody like Atreus, we can actually look at uh, Atreus, I think that's how it's spelled. Damn it, I don't know. Uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, but yeah, this is mostly what people go. I, yeah, like I said, I do think this is fine. Uh, and yeah, and then we can also look at the uh, inspiration tree. Like I said, unsealed spellbook. People go this, or I've seen Atreus go this specifically versus ranged matchups. And I don't think it's bad. I just think that you probably get more usefulness out of fleet footwork. And just overall, the tree is, is really good as well. Uh, you know, just giving you that sustain and stuff. But uh, maybe this is better. I don't know. I'd have to try it or I'd have to tell them to try it. Right, so now let's go into the practice tool. This video is probably relatively long, right? But that doesn't matter because we're, we're going over Cassante. So over Cassante, uh, for summoner spells, obviously TP because you're more likely, a, you're only going to be a solo laner unless there's people who end up figuring out that support Cassante is actually pretty good given how low the CDs are now uh, and how fast you're able to get really strong. We'll see you know support Cassante might be really really good but uh i think ghost has its usefulness because you have so much mobility now with your e i think that you can take ghost like a good more percentage amount of the times in your games and flash isn't as needed uh yeah and then uh i don't think you can take anything else but yeah i think ghost is fine a uh, ghost is possible and, and yeah 
Uh, and now let's, let's let's test some things, right? Let's test if we're able to go over walls and yada yada yada. Uh, sure, we can go over this. We can use this 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 thing. Uh, this has this pretty good, right? That's good. Right. So a couple things I want to test. I want to test if uh what's this thing called i forgot what it was called if uh so i'll turn off minions add gold add a little bit more gold uh, let's fast forward i want to test if conditioning ends up giving uh haste on the the q and stuff like that right because i think that's a, a very big thing to to notice because if it does right but we get yes i think it does right go over here it gives you 16. so it only gives you the base and not the bonus which is very very weird right so uh when you buy this 57 so now it gives you the bonus i think it gives you the bonus based on how much you've ended up buying right so now if i buy this i end up having 98 meaning that if i just buy one no magic mantle i'm at 120 basically right uh, it's a little bit off, but I, I I don't think this matters as much, right? Uh, and then, yeah, you end up getting this. So, conditioning, right? This means that you're able to save uh, either 450 gold or 500 gold because you will not need triple vest, right? Because if you are able to get this uh, by 12 minutes, uh, then at 12 minutes, you will end up getting the rest of the amount of resistances meaning that instead of going for you know an extra chain vest which might not build into what you want you can start building into your iceborne gauntlet right instead of having to, to build that or you can start building into boots whichever one is good right and so once you get this now you now you have maxed out this right you've maxed it out with with just this right and that's very very strong so conditioning has an added bonus to Cassante, allowing you to not necessarily needing to build triple chain vests and stuff, uh, depending on how the game goes. Obviously, if you're snowballing and you're able to get like triple chain vest very, very quickly uh, before 12 minutes, let's say you're able to get triple chain vest at nine minutes. Uh, I think it's still better because why wait the extra three minutes when you can get a super strong queue uh, very, very early, right? Because double chain vest uh, will give you two point uh we should probably uh let's get one, rid of one of these let's just buy an mr cloak because that's i think a little bit more uh thing right that's it's gonna be a little bit more equal right uh it gives you uh still a, a lot right i forgot what the point was because uh, double chain vest will give you up to here right it'll give you around it'll give you 80 specifically but because i have conditioning actually i could uh reset the game right so double chain vest would end up giving you right 2.28 okay my minions are going but yeah it'll give you 2.28 which actually no for whatever reason conditioning is still here that's annoying but yeah now uh, you saw it was like 2.5 or whatever where is it mr right around there it'd be like 2.5 uh and then yeah right what the hell was i saying uh so yeah that's that's how much you would be at double chain vest and stuff like that uh, and then like i said uh yeah you can get double chain vest why double chain vest because chain vest iceborne gauntlet is crucial to your build and then it builds into jack show so they did end up making a change where now your uh ultimate ends up getting rid of the bonus armor and MR that Jack Show ends up giving you, making it a little bit worse, but Jack Show will still give you a lot of damage because it increases your bonus armor and MR by 30%, which is huge, right? So at this, you end up having 118, like I said, uh, which means you pretty much have max cooldown on Q. So if you're able to get this, this is a 400, this is a 2000 gold cost build, right? At 2000 gold, uh, obviously passed after getting your door and shield and stuff at 2000 gold you end up having like max stacks or the or, or max q or yeah max out q at minute 12 right so if you only get 2000 gold by minute 12 this is the best thing or if you're going to you know if you don't have the ability to purchase 
more than this before having to go to lane and reaching minute 12, don't worry about it. You can end up start building into your Iceborne Gauntlet, right? Or if you believe that, you know, you're going to hit level 12 without needing to, to purchase anything else, uh, you know, you can start building into your Iceborne Gauntlet. You can start building a uh, haste and stuff like that, right? So if we talk about the haste real quick, obviously I don't have the max haste here, right? But the haste, the eight haste that I have lowers the W by an entire second and lowers the E by an entire 0 0.75, 0 0.74 to be exact, right? And I wasn't exact over here. So that's huge. And also it lowers the all out cooldown by, I believe, uh, nine, maybe more. I don't know. But right. Uh, and if we like we have the precision tree, so we're going to stack our runes, right? This gives us 15 haste from this. This means my E is on an eight second cooldown the w was on the 11 second cooldown that is disgusting no and the ultimate for whatever reason didn't go down very strange oh what i don't know that is it basic ability haste oh it's basic ability haste i did not know that ah okay so yeah and then if you go iceborne gauntlet uh okay let's talk about items real quick right so after going over runes and stuff let's talk about items or we could also talk about skill path. Let's talk about skill path real quick, right? The so level 18. Like I said, always put uh, points in your R whenever possible. Uh, max out your Q first, simply because it is super duper strong, right? It gets, it gets so much more than all these other ones. And this is what you need to play lane, right? Uh, now, do you max W or do you max E? So because your W ends up having like... It's one of the biggest burst spells, and you will be able to get, at the very least, uh, if you do end up maxing it out, will you get two cast of it uh, while in your all-out form? You will not, right? Even if I max it, it'll be eight seconds, and your your all-out duration is only 15 seconds, right? So this is obviously without having any extra haste, but if you do end up getting some haste, if you can get this down to 0.75 seconds, it's actually very, very useful. Right, because when you press all out, if you start your old, you know, the the thing of your ultimate, as soon as you know, obviously you do this, go like that. By the time your all out is about to end, and there's a cool thing about your all out form or about your W. Uh, if you have your W available, when your all out is gonna end, right? So also take into note uh, before I talk about that, uh, that. When you're charging your W, it doesn't stop your the seconds of your all-out form going down, right? So you don't, like, even having this at 7.5, you need it a lot lower than that in order to, to uh, get two applications of your W off, even if you max it, right? So let's get some, some standard uh, items that end up having haste, right? So I would say this is a good enough amount, or, or probably you would need it to be like six seconds. Because you can charge it up for one second and you want to charge it as much as possible and stuff like that, right? So I think this is completely fine right here, right? So let's press R. And then once you press R, hold your W, right? And then you want to basically use it three times, right? Because you used your ultimate in order to get you one. And then you can use it again to get you another one. And then by the time you're ending, one cool thing, if you start it, ah, I messed up. So you need more than uh, however much haste this is. So I have 45, I have 58 basic ability haste. So you need more than that. You need, I believe, at least 65. We can uh, test this out. This is uh, 68, right? I believe this is as much as you need because, right? This will give you three applications of your ultimate. I think I messed up here, right? But there's uh, one specific thing I want to test or not even test, just talk about, right? I think we'll just do this, right? So when you're going down, you, it actually stops you from, if you use your your W at the end of an all out, it actually stops you from, from going, transforming back, giving you like an extra E, right? So if you use your E, right? Let's say you use your E right before your all out, right? Uh, you see the timer going down and then you hold your W, it ends up giving you, or it allows you to finish the charging up of your W. Meaning you're going to get the, the damage. And if you used your E before you're all out finished, you're going to get the cooldown reduction. And 
this means that by the time you finish casting your W, your E will be back off cooldown, getting an extra shield and getting usefulness out of the all-out uh, reduction of your E. So there's a couple mechanics that you want to do, right? So, uh, like I said, we'll, let, we'll try it out, right? So that's one W. How many W? Can I get three Ws off in one all-out, depending on how much CD I end up having, right? Three max Ws. Obviously, you can tap it, which can end up being really good. You see, I was it was super close to finishing, and it didn't, right? Uh, so I would say the safest bet would probably be having like Frozen Heart. Right now, I end up having what plus uh, 15, 83. Uh, with 83, you can 100% get all out, right? You would need these specific three items, right? And then you would probably end up having uh, Jack Show, or you can end up having a different item that gives like 10 haste. Uh, and then you can get like CDR boots, right? I think CDR boots on the champion are actually not bad, right? And then you can end up getting a jack show. Like if you don't end up needing plated steel caps, I think CDR boots are completely fine. Uh, giving me in total 88 uh, basic ability haste, right? And that wasn't even a fully charged one, right? So this ends up having a five second cooldown. Letting me charge it again, right? And then by the time the, the thing is going to end. Let me use my W again. Right? And so, yeah, there's that. And I think that's that's a cool thing that you can do if you end up having... I don't think you need Ability Haste Boots, but if you end up being able to buy, like, these three items in a game, uh, you will end up getting enough haste to get three applications of your ultimate w off which not only gives you 75 percent damage reduction but it gives you a ton of burst damage right and you can see already there it deals 120 flat plus 13.7 percent of a target's maximum health as physical damage which means if you hit them with the ultimate version of it it'll deal that much but as true damage right and so where the hell did the where did this thing go Right, we can start giving them HP. Control Shift T. I don't think I'm, I'm giving them more. Right, so uh, this is an. Let's just say this is another tank. I end up having uh, this amount of MR, so let's give them this amount of uh, MR as well. Right, 350 MR. 350 MR. Right. Uh, we press R. Our ultimate did 1K damage. Right. That's versus another tank champion with the same stats as me. Right. 700 true damage and obviously they end up having more HP now deal 900 true damage like the more HP a target has the more damage your W has on them and usually high HP uh, target champions end up being very very slow right think Mundo think Scion these champions end up having a ton of HP and they don't have any movement abilities meaning that your W will be a lot easier to hit versus them and even your your base W uh, that actually didn't deal that much damage, right? Because while it does a lot of uh, percent max H, uh, max HP, uh, if they have a lot of resistances, it will not deal that much damage, your base one. But if they don't have a lot of resistances, let's say Mundo who doesn't buy any resistances, right? 140 armor and ends up dealing a decent amount, right? 420, blaze it. But yeah, so you significantly versus, uh, I mean, when you press your all out, you're really good versus every single champion in the game. Uh, but when you're not in your all-out form, you're not as strong versus tanks, right? So that's something that you have to uh, to value. So now let's go into items. Let's just get rid of these dummies. Uh, yeah, so let's add some more gold just so that we never run out, right? So obviously in, in laning phase, right, if we just talk about that, uh, I've seen... Atreus try like cloth farmer and uh, refillable. That's probably decent just so that you can end up getting to the, you know, chain vest, chain vest, chain vest or whatever, right? If you think that uh, the lane is so free that not only are you able to get to this a lot quicker than you would or uh, or you just don't have conditioning and something like that. Uh, but yeah, like this is definitely something you could do. There's obviously the standard Dorn shield uh, one pot or whatever. Uh, that's completely fine, but uh, let's just talk about completed items, right? Outside of, or, you know, if you're going against a physical damage champion, Chain Vest, Chain Vest, Chain Vest is amazing, right? For 2,400 gold, you get infinite stats on your on your stuff, right? Uh, if you're going against an MR champion, Negatron, Negatron, 
uh, no magic is a little bit cheaper, right? It's 300 gold cheaper, and it essentially gives you the same thing. Obviously, you're losing uh, in total 10 magic resistance, but it's not you get to like that very low cooldown while also being very good versus your lane opponent, right? Uh, one thing that's different about this, because if you look at Chained Vest, you have at the very least Jack Show, Iceborne, and then you get on a you can get on a like. Iceborne and Jack Show are two items that you really, really want, right? They're probably going to 100% of the games that you're in be a part of your final build if you're able to get to a final build, right? And then Unending Despair and Thornmail are completely fine items to end up building depending on what you need, right? Uh, usually Thornmail ends up being really good and then Unending Despair is also really, really strong as well uh, if, you know, the fights are going to end up going longer, meaning the healings are, is going to be very strong. Sunfires is not that good. But the difference between that and Negatron Cloak is that there's not many items here that you end up wanting, right? There's literally three because you don't want Abyssal Mask. You're not buying Wit's End. And so Jack Show, okay, that justifies one Negatron Cloak. But then now you're thinking between Koenig Rookern and Force of Nature. So Koenig Rookern is obviously a really strong item. But I would say it's not as good on Cassante because Koenig Rookern is an item that's really good because it gives you a shield versus magic damage. And a big thing about Cassante is the fact that you end up having a lot of shielding in your kit. And that's when you want to end up fighting, right? Not only do you have shielding, but you have damage reduction. So, like, a champion like, uh, what's it? Excuse me. A champion like Orn in lane versus a magic damage champion would love to get Kanan Rookern because it's going to allow you to play the game. Right, it's going to allow you to play a little bit more aggressive or get a little bit closer in lane and take a little bit more damage because you have no other way of reducing damage outside of CCing your opponent. As where Cassante is a little different, right? And then Cassante will benefit off of getting more resistances, which is Force of Nature, right? And the Force of Nature also gives you move speed, which ends up giving you uh, the ability to. It gives you however much move speed you end up having is however much move speed. Oh, I. What the hell just happened? Oh, this thing. Uh, however much move speed you end up having is however much move speed you uh, you end up giving to your E, right? So 375, uh, and, and then this will give you an extra 15, right? That extra 15 is not going to matter uh, when you use your when you cast your E, right? Because your E is based, or the, the speed of your E is based on your move speed, right? It'll make a little difference. It's probably not even that noticeable, right? But... The big thing about it is that it ends up giving you in total 125 magic resistance as opposed to the AD over here. And that is pretty good because when you combine that with Jack Show, which gives you an extra 30%, an extra 30% of that 45 is an extra 10. Uh, and then also an extra 2% of that 45 or an extra 3% of that 45 is about like an extra 2. So it'll give you an extra 12 uh then what's it called then uh Koenig Rookern uh at least when it synergizes with Jack Show and conditioning but then this means that you just have more damage reduction because you have more magic resistance uh which means you know your ease are going to matter a little bit more uh, it also gives you more damage uh this means that just reducing the damage in general means you're going to be taking more damage because you have added damage reduction with your W and stuff like that so I do think that Force of Nature is a little bit of a better item than Koenig Rookern is on this champion, especially since you aren't a champion that ends up getting a lot of bonus HP because you're mostly stacking your resistances instead of, you know, HP, right? You're not a champion that's going to get Heart Steel. You're not a champion that's going to get War Mogs. Or, you know, those are two items that give you a lot of base HP where you're a champion that might go for Frozen Heart. You're a champion that might go for Thorn Mail. Meaning that uh, these two items give low to zero HP, right? Frozen Heart doesn't give any, and then Thornmail only gives 150 and stuff like that. So, for in terms of magic resist items, I think Force of Nature is just better for Cassante because of how he plays. Outside of Cassante, Koenig Rookern is probably the best magic resist item for every other uh, tank champion, in my opinion, right? Uh, I don't think I'm wrong, but other people will probably say otherwise. But, yeah, so, in terms of that, uh, yeah, so, uh, and that's in terms of early game build pathing and how you might end up, uh, like, building, right? You're never buying more than uh, two Negatron Cloaks, 
uh, as where because if you're building into this uh, and you're building into where is it into this uh, to be honest if you're going against a magic damage champion and you go negatron negatron you can you can't build another um, no magic mantle the only way you can end up building another mo no magic mantle is if you're going at the canic rooker but the difference between negatron negatron and then getting like cloth cloth is 200 gold uh, obviously this is a lot of inventory space where if you have what's it called if you end up having Doran shield right uh and then you end up having a refillable which you know is definitely likely uh your your inventory is full so there's that right uh but yeah so negatron negatron cloth is also really good and then when you get conditioning uh your q is is, is maxed out right uh, there's stuff like that but yeah, outside of that, I think uh, Force of Nature is the best MR item outside of Jack Show for you, right? And then, uh, so let's go over full items, right? Entire items. So over here, in terms of boots, I think you always get defensive boots. Uh, and I think you always get plated steel caps, even if you're going against MR targets. Uh, the fact that you end up having a lot of, or uh, magic damage targets, the fact that you have so many ways of canceling CC is disgusting. Not only can you dodge it with your E, you can dodge it with your ultimate. You can dodge it with your W, basically. Not necessarily dodge it, but you can make the the CC not as effective, right? And you can kind of dodge it as well, right? So, like, Vagar Cage. I think there's, like, a weird thing where during the travel of your W, if you get stunned during it, uh, it will stop it. So, it's not as strong versus specific champions, but, you know, you're not unstoppable during the 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 movement part of it right you're unstoppable now but when you move you're not unstoppable and you can end up being stopped right so there's that i just like uh play the steel caps gives you five more resistances and the only thing you're missing is the tenacity uh but besides that yeah i think like play the steel caps is pretty much 90 percent of the time uh, i don't think mercury treads are super duper good right now but yeah so if we go to the tank items you never buy zeke's convergence it's just not good uh lock it maybe it gives you a lot of things that you want haste is good armor namar is really good the shield is really good uh the hp is is decent right i don't think this is an item that you ever look forward to building because i think you just scale so much more off of just getting like actual tank items because of how much they end up giving you right so lock it is cool I don't think it's that good. Knight's Vow, maybe. These are like specific pro play cases, but in solo queue, you are legitimately a carry champion. Even in pro play, you're a carry champion, but you can carry in different ways with different team comps and pro play, where in solo queue, uh, you're going to have a lot more chance of winning the game if you just play a game where you become the strongest version of yourself and not necessarily help out other teammates. You know, that's more high elo. That's more other things, right? Uh, Winter's Approach slash Fimbo Winter. I do think this item is very, very strong, right? But I think Alcasante, because you don't necessarily have mana problems, right? As long as you're not spamming your W and E before, like, a couple levels, uh, you're not losing a lot of mana. Or you're not using a lot of mana. Like, you, your Q is so spammable, has 20, 20 mana, and your base mana isn't super high, right? 320. You have whatever mana regen, right? After 15 seconds, you get an extra Q, which obviously is not super duper uh, amazing. But like Winter's Approach and Fimble Winter, nah, Fimble Winter becomes very, very strong, right? The HP, the, the haste, and then the shield is really, really good, especially if you end up getting something like Spirit Visage. But I just think it's it's not as good as, on you as it is on another champion because you already have so much shielding. And obviously getting more shielding is good, but the fact that the shield is 8 seconds long... And you're not a chance like you your shield is, is super duper low when you go all out so I, I don't know i think it's good i just don't think it's necessary and i think there's better items right trailblazer you never buy this item it yeah they, they needed to buff it before but okay now thorn mail i think thorn mail is super duper strong uh I, this is definitely an item you can buy obviously if you need it um right if you need the grievous wounds this is going to be an item that you look forward to purchasing because at full build, let's say you just have, you know, full build, right? Uh, this is before even having the, before getting in combat, right? Jack show, okay, Jack show proc'd. 
it'll deal 72 damage to the attacker. That is a lot of damage, right? While they did nerf the scaling of it, uh, which is not super duper good, it's still super duper good, right? And, ooh, one thing that I didn't know is that Frozen Heart keeps you in combat, right? If I get rid of Frozen Heart, will my Jack Soul drop? Okay, my jack show is just not dropping. Okay, there it goes. But if I stay indefinite and for oh, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. I did not know this. This is a huge discovery. Frozen Heart actually puts you in combat for Jack Show. Whoa. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, sorry for doing this. Does it put you in combat for Rift Maker? One second. It does not. Okay, so it only puts you in combat for Jack Show. That is amazing. That's wild. I don't even know what. Oh, oh wow. I sold Jack Show and I still was in combat with it. Okay, so this is a huge discovery. So Frozen Heart has a very big radius, right? Meaning that you don't have to end up getting in combat. Uh, like this is essentially gives you a range way of proccing Jack Show before the fight. Giving you so many resistances and giving you a lot of uh, a lot of damage on your Q, right? So this is 409, uh, and then when I get off of it, right? And how much resistances do I drop? 80 and 30 over here. Now you lose 40 damage from this. Obviously, you lose damage over here and stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, so yeah, that's that's a very big discovery. I will be talking about this later. Uh, but yeah, uh, so. Like I said, and also that increases the damage of Thornmail. Thornmail is also another item that puts you in combat uh, without you having to hit the enemy champion because you hit them when they hit you. So that also has a very big thing, right? Uh, like I said, Frozen Heart, without even the, the cool little thing I just found with Jack Show, it becomes, it's just super duper strong, right? The, the armor is really, really good. It has one of the highest armor outside of uh, Thornmail, matches Randuin's, and I think uh, has a little bit more than everything else. Uh, except Jack Show when it's like fully stacked. Uh, but the ability haste. Like I said, if you're going for a triple W in all out form, you probably need to end up getting Frozen Heart. Right? You need to end up getting some ability haste uh, items. And so Frozen Heart becomes very, very good. Right? Uh, Abyssal Mask, it doesn't give enough resistances and you shouldn't be the one to buy this anyways. For Spirit Visage actually has really good synergy with you, right? Because you're getting a lot of shielding, right? You're getting a lot of shielding. You're getting a lot of healing from your ultimate. But besides that, uh, there is one thing where Spirit Visage, I thought, because it increases the shield on you and because you end up giving your team your shield to a teammate as well, I thought it would increase the shield of your, of the, of the shield, increase the shield that you give to your teammate because it increases on yourself. That doesn't work, uh, but if your teammate ends up having Spirit Visage, it ends up increasing the shield on them, which is really, really strong, right? Uh, but besides that, 400 HP is good. The 50 MR obviously is a lot lower than than this thing, than uh, Force of Nature, but you get this because the ability haste is really good, and you pro in some games where you don't need as much MR, Spirit Visage is probably really, really good because then you get the shielding versus champions who will do uh, like physical damage, uh, and they'll do true damage and stuff like that, right? So, Spear Visage is a little bit, uh, it's probably second to Force of Nature in terms of which MR item you want. Uh, I, I would say it's probably better than Canic Rooker. Never buy Sunfire. Uh, the change it to your Q, giving you so much more, uh, what's it called? Wave Clear, you don't need Sunfire, never buy this item. Randuin, specific item, if there's two or three crit champions on the enemy team, you buy Randuin's. Right, if they have like Trist Mid, Zeri Bottom, Kindred Jungle, or no Kindred Jungle, right? Uh, and then let's say they have like in a Riven top lane that has Sundered Sky. Even if they don't have, if it's just Tristana and Zeri Bot lane or, or on the enemy team and they're building crit, you buy Randuin's because 30% less damage from that plus the 12% damage from Critical Strikes is a lot of damage reduction. So there's that. Uh, never buy Hollow Radiance. Unending Despair is another item that can be super duper strong, right? So obviously it gives you 350 HP. The 60 armor is not bad. The 10 haste is something that you might need if you want to get the triple W in your all out form. But the biggest thing is the fact that uh, the healing it provides you 
when you're in combat because you're somebody especially if you're going a a haste build this means that you're going to be in combat and you're going to be in your w a little bit more because you're going to end up having like enough haste to pull out your w so many times and your e so many times meaning you're going to get a lot more effective hp meaning that you're going to get a lot more uses of unending despair meaning that you're going to get more healing Right? And not only that, but you're going to deal a little bit more damage to the enemy champions, right? Because uh, Kasante is someone who can end up being in the middle of the enemy backline, which if the enemy frontliners want to support their backline champions, they're going to have to be on top of you and stuff like that, right? So this can end up being a super strong item. I just think you might only want it if you're going for like a full haste build in order to get that triple W off, right? Uh, which means that you're probably going to need... Uh, you know, legend haste. <laughs> uh, let's say, let's get rid of 15 haste, right? Uh, I don't think you're gonna be able to get triple W off with this, right? Because you get 15 seconds, it'll take seven seconds for the first, seven seconds for the next, right? Okay, let's try it, right? You get one. This is without legend haste. You get two. Is very close. No, you get three applications of it. So without Legend Haste and with just these three items, right? Let's say you don't have Legend Haste. You, I'm pretty sure you will need the basic ability haste. You do end up having the ability to get three ultimate or yeah, three ultimate W's off if you know you're actually able to get them off, right? Which means that that's a lot of damage, that's a lot of damage reduction. And, and, you know, a lot of usefulness, right? Each of those Ws gives you an extra second in combat. And then the last W, I would say, is a little bit more important. Because then your uh, your all-out form will end up will end. And your access to the rest of your HP bar will end up coming back. Meaning that you'll get the HP, uh, you know, it will end up healing you more than the 65% threshold that your all-out leaves you in. So I'd say that's very, very big. Right, so I think that this build ends up having a form of usefulness, right? So making Unending Despair very, very strong. And then we go to uh, Force of Nature. We talked about it, right? It's just the highest MR item you can get. So if you're just trying to go as much MR as possible, I think, uh, you know, if you're trying to get as much resistances as possible, it's the best. And for laning, I'd say it's the best because it'll give you more MR and because of all your damage reduction and your shielding it just makes a lot more sense to end up stacking more magic resistance uh, than than getting in a, an extra magic damage shield obviously Koenig will end up being super duper strong but uh, I think force of nature if there's you know a couple other instances of magic damage on the enemy team will just outvalue Koenig uh, massively right uh, Koenig might still just be better because you know, the magic damage shield kind of just makes you not have to worry about using your E and your W and stuff like that. It's just more low elo skewed because it just it's already there. You don't have anything. You don't have to play around that, right? Where force of nature is more high elo skewed, where if you're able to use your abilities off cooldown and use them correctly and stuff like that, uh, you're going to get more value because you have more resistances, right? Iceborne Gauntlet, always buy this item. Uh, Canyon Rookern, maybe it's situational or maybe it's just better. I don't know. Dead Man's Plate, never buy this. Uh, Heart Steel, you don't scale enough to buy Heart Steel. It's probably pretty good, but I don't think it scales as hard as everything else. And Jack Show, this is probably another item that you always buy. Uh, so yeah, that's the build. Uh, so if you're going max haste build, or if you're going for haste, right? I would say the build would probably be you go something like this because once you hit iceborne gauntlet frozen heart double kindle gem uh, which then builds into spare visage and another thing the spare you get the triple w right and you have to be maxing w second right so at level 13 if you have enough gold to get this you have triple w which can be a very very big uh a swing in power for your team i would say that's something that can be good then obviously you build into this because you're probably going to need some MR. Then you build into this. Then you build into this, right? And then you finally top it off with, you know, Unending Despair, yada, yada. Maybe you don't even get Unending Despair and you just go straight for Jack Show, right? And then you finish off Unending Despair. Depends, right? It really does depend. I think this will probably be a very strong build if, you know, you value your W in a, in a game. If you're, if you're, 
if your usefulness comes from your W because they can't dodge it, because the damage reduction is super duper strong, I would say this is probably one of the best builds you can go. Right? Uh, let's see how much resistances we have after we lose all of them uh, because of your ultimate. You know, you have 80 and 180, right? And then you just press W. Look at that. 600 damage versus someone versus a squishy and stuff like that. Right? Uh, there's this build. And then there is a full armor build, right? Or full, full uh, resistances build. Uh, and then here, right? You get the, the highest resistances, which would be Force of Nature and Thornmail. And then you have the choice to get anything else, right? And then there's also obviously the choice where if you're going against the champion that has that you need healing reduction versus, you know, getting Bramble Vest is going to be very strong, which means you could still end up going something like this. And then you just build whatever else you can in the building, right? You have to finish something. Uh, Thornmail, Spirit Visage. Maybe your W is so strong that you don't even end up getting Jack Show, right? Because. Yeah, you end up losing damage, but you get, like, better items, right? How much resistances do I lose now? You only lose a little bit more, right? You lost, or you gained four more magic resistance from Jack Show, and you gained probably, like, seven more armor, which is nothing, right? Maybe 11 more armor. So you don't even lose that much, but you get more uh, thorn mail. Or you get thorn mail, right? So I think this might end up being the best build uh, for Cassante throughout anything. Right, just because it gives you that triple W. So, uh, last thing we want to test. Can we go over walls if there are teammates? Whoops. Right, teammate here. You can still go over walls with, with teammates. Uh, obviously, you can't go over walls with without. Right, uh, we can bring you over here. Right, uh, you can't go over uh, walls without your teammate. So, yeah. Now, you can only go over walls without, without your... Uh, or with your teammates. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. Oh, one more thing, right? The thing, uh, how much, oh, let's, I don't think anything goes up from this, right? Based on charge time, right? So, yeah. So, there's obviously the, the knockback thing, right? In lane, which, like I said, right? So, with this, if you W tap without any bonus armor no more, obviously, I have a little bit, right? I have the 16 because of conditioning, and I can't get rid of that unless I get out of the practice tool. Without uh, that, how much armor do you need in order to tap W and get that? Because as you can see on top of them, and you can also see over here, uh, it w they are still stunned, right? So how much? If you get one a chain vest, obviously I have the extra 16, right? I have 56, uh, 57 MR, right? Uh, tap W. At about one chain vest, you end up having, or at, at a chain vest and a cloth armor, or a no magic mantle. You end up having enough uh, cast time reduction on your Q in order to uh, hit them with the W tap and the Q, right? But obviously, to ensure this, you would want a little bit more. I would say at 80. We can even try at, at uh, how much is this? This is 72, right? At 72, I would say it's a lot easier. Right, as you can see, they had like maybe a fraction, like a tenth of a second to be able to flash out. This is that 72 armor Namar or, or bonus resistances, right? And obviously, if we add another one at 80, I'm pretty sure it's just undodgeable, right? So at double, at double chain vest, oops, at double chain vest, your tap W into this is undodgeable, undodgeable, right? And then if you get even more, if you get how much do I have? If you get up to 100, right, I have 100, 98, pretty much 100. Then it becomes legitimately un undodgeable, right? They are stunned throughout the entire duration, meaning that you can flip them into, flip them and do that, right? So, uh, whatever, let's just go triple chain vest, right? So at 120, right, at 100 and 120, it is impossible for them to get out of this, right? They are stunned throughout the entire duration. So if you can just land a tap W on them, it, it's over. Uh, you can do whatever you want with their body, right? Uh, which means that holding the lane in front of here, when you have double chain vest, uh, double chain vest cloth armor or something like that, uh, becomes infinitely more uh, valuable. 
uh, when you have like around a hundred. And if they don't have flash, if they don't have flash, all you need is sixty. Right? If they don't have flash and they don't have like any movement abilities, uh, it becomes a lot harder for them to dodge because if you miss, right? Like they don't have to go very far. Right? We could throw it over here. It's only because I'm on top of them, right? Right? If you move back a little bit because they're going to walk backwards, you can miss this. See, it's it's a little dodgeable. I don't know. I feel like th these things have a, a very weird uh, hitbox. <laughs> but... I think around 60, it becomes very hard to play. I'm pretty sure at 60, uh, it's, it's pretty much undodgeable at that point. So that's another thing. If you're able to just base and get like a chain vest and another cloth armor, which is about as much as I have, uh, your combo becomes disgusting. So at 1100 gold, where you would buy plated steel caps before, now getting a chain vest and a cloth armor becomes more valuable. Just for setting up your your uh, your uh, Q3 combo, which obviously you know in lane usually uh, you know you have a, if they're a melee champion, right? You set up your Q3 versus minions, right? Then you're chilling, you're chilling, you're chilling. Boom, press W, bop, and now you you're behind them, and then you just you know do whatever you can, right? You usually do that combo when you're trying to set up an all in, or you're trying to set up a a jungle gank, right? So that's it for me i don't think there's any much more things we could speak about right i guess you could say like as you can see uh i'm pressing w and moving my mouse around people used to do this all the time and then figure out where they want to go now it doesn't matter right depending on where you end up uh using your w is where Cassante will look making it have a little bit more counterplay right so that's it for me have a great day uh don't think Cassante is super duper weak because they unironically made this champion a little bit stronger while also making him uh easier to play against which does make him weaker but it's for a good reason right and obviously if we look at his win rate he ends up having a 46 right 46 emerald plus if we go diamond plus 40 still 46 let's go uh masters plus 47 is, is starting to climb higher grandmaster 49 uh, and this is a global uh, and then challenger and challenger 50 percent right but if we go lower if we go to plat uh, i mean well we just want to go to platinum right platinum he's suffering right gold he's suffering silver he's suffering right so the lower elo you go he's still having that problem but i would say that apparently in in iron he's a little better but i would say that uh you know people just have to like understand a couple new things and i hope this ends up helping people out so, you know, I'm not talking about, like, obviously I said some things. Uh, so let me know if you agree or disagree. And, you know, thank you for watching. Have a great day. I hope, you know, uh, you take this into account and, you know, give Cassante another chance after learning that, you know, from what I taught you, right? I'm going to give him a chance. I will probably end up making gameplay videos of him going for different builds and stuff. So uh, let me know, right? Tomorrow or in two days or something, whenever. Uh, I will put out a Tristana video and things like that. So have a great day. Catch you uh, later. Hopefully, you know, you watch my other videos and stuff. I give out some pretty good information. Uh, like, comment, sub. All right. Have a great day. Peace.